Hey there, this is MathCamp321, bringing you another installment of Finding Limits, this time by simplifying the complex fraction. So if your substitution yields a fraction of 0 over 0, you need to try something else. And this idea was addressed in prior videos. But this specific video is going to talk about simplifying a complex fraction as a way to get the substitution to work. So I have provided two examples. Let's take a look at example one. Number one, find the limit as x approaches one of this big complex fraction. To start, you're going to want to plug in one for every occurrence of x. And if it works out to be a fraction or a number other than zero over zero, then you're done. You can stop. However, if you plug in and you get zero over zero, that means you, you need to do something else. So what I'm going to do down here underneath, I'm going to plug in 1 and see what happens. So we've got 1 on the top left, then we've got 1 minus 2, which is negative 1, plus 1, all over 1 minus 1. Now 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, and negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is no good. This is called indeterminate form, and it means you must try something else. So my goal here is to simplify the complex fraction and hope that that's going to work. So just to buy me a little bit more space, I'm going to get rid of this scratch work that I just did. This is going to be a little bit of intense algebra coming up, but the first thing that I like to do to simplify a complex fraction is partition the whole thing off in brackets. It just helps to maintain a little bit of organization. So that's teaching tip number one, use brackets. Teaching tip number two, any value or expression that's not written as a fraction, I like to write as a fraction by putting it over 1. So this 1 at the end, I like to think of as 1 over 1. And this expression x minus 1, I like to think of as x minus 1 over 1. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is focus on the little denominators that exist on the inside of the bracket. So I've got a denominator of x minus 2. I've got a denominator of 1, and I've got another denominator of 1. And I need to establish the LCD, the least common denominator. And this is going to be an expression that's going to get rid of all the existing denominators. And when I look at collectively x minus 2, 1, and 1, the LCD is going to be x minus 2. So what I'm going to do is multiply the top and bottom by x minus 2 over x minus 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is take the expression x minus 2, and I'm going to distribute it into the top left of this complex fraction. So in other words, I've got x minus 2 times 1 over x minus 2. Now, anything times its reciprocal is just 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write 1. Now, our next operation is a plus, so I'm going to write a plus, And that came from right here. And now I'm going to distribute the x minus 2 into the top right, which would be like multiplying it by 1. And taking anything and multiplying it by 1 just leaves you what you started with, which is x minus 2. Now, because there's a plus here and not a minus, I don't need the parentheses. Had this been a minus, though, I would have needed the parentheses so I could have distributed the negative through appropriately. So the numerator is done. Now let's go to the denominator, and let's take that expression x minus 2, and we'll distribute it into x minus 1. Well, what we have here is a binomial times a binomial, so we could either FOIL, or we could write it as two disjoint or distinct factors, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to write x minus 1 times x minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. I'm running out of space. So I'm going to draw an arrow to sort of provide a road map for you guys. And I'm going to continue. Okay, so cleaning up the numerator, we've got 1 plus x minus 2, which boils down to x minus 1. And then the denominator is still x minus 1 times x minus 2. The x minus 1s are going to cancel out because it exists on the numerator and the denominator. So now when I substitute in 1 for every occurrence of x, I'm going to have 1 on the top, and I'm going to have 1 minus 2 on the bottom, and that's going to result in a value of negative 1. 
So the answer to this first limit question is negative 1. And we are able to do it by simplifying the complex fraction. Okay, let's go to number 2. Find the limit as x approaches 3 of this other big complex fraction. So our first uh, line of defense should be to plug in 3 for every occurrence of x. Maybe it'll work out on the first try and we'll be done. So I start with 2 fifths on the top left. Then I'm going to subtract from that 2 in the numerator. And then 3 plus 2 is 5. And then th this is all over x minus 3 or 3 minus 3. So it looks like, again, we've got a situation where we've got 0 over 0. This is known as indeterminate form, and it means you have to try something else. So we did, we did give it a try, plugging in, but it's not going to work out for us. So I'm going to get rid of this scratch work here, so it'll leave me a little bit of room to do the algebra that's going to be coming up. So teaching tip number one for simplifying a complex fraction will be to partition the whole thing off with a grouping symbol. This is for organizational purposes. The other thing that I suggest is that any value or expression that's not written as a fraction, I like to make look like a fraction. So I'm going to take this x minus 3 and put it over 1. And now I'm going to figure out the LCD. I'm going to figure out what it takes to make all these little denominators go away. And the little denominators are the 5, the x minus 2, and the 1. To make all of these little sub-denominators go away is going to require the 5 and the x minus 2, or the x plus 2, rather. Okay, so now it's going to be time to distribute. And if I distribute this 5 times x plus 2 into the top left, the first thing I notice is that the 5s are going to cancel out. And the elements that I'm going to be left with are the 2 and the x plus 2. 2 times x plus 2 is 2x plus 4. The next operation is a minus. Now when I multiply or distribute 5 times x plus 2 into 2 over x plus 2, the, thing, the element that's going to go away is the x plus 2. So I'm left with 2 and 5 for a product of 10. Good, so the numerator is done. The denominator, in the denominator, nothing's going to cancel out. So I'm left with three disjoint things, or three distinct things. A 5, an x plus 2, and an x minus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and just write those things as distinct factors. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more cleaning up on the top. 2x plus 4 minus 10 is really 2x minus 6. The bottom I'll leave as distinct factors, again, just to rewrite. I have a lot of red going on here, so I'm just going to switch colors because I think it might be a little easier to see what's happening. Um, and then numerator, I'm going to factor out a 2, leaving me with x minus 3. So I'm going to take out a 2, and that leaves me with x minus 3 over the 3 factors. The x minus 3's are common and will cancel out. And now we plug in 3 for every occurrence of x, we're going to end up with 2 on the top. We have the 5 on the bottom. 3 plus 2 is another 5. So it looks like we're going to get an answer of 2 25ths. And again, in this technique, we can only get such an answer if we simplify the complex fraction. And this method of determining the LCD and multiplying through on the top and the bottom is what I think is the fastest, most efficient way to do that.